Are you making decisions based on guesswork or are you leveraging the power of data to drive your marketing strategy? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use data analytics to make smarter marketing decisions that are going to boost results. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what metrics to track, which tools to use, and how to translate data into actionable marketing strategies. Now, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more tips on how to improve your marketing using data. Now, we're going to jump right in and we're going to talk about why data analytics is crucial for marketing success. Now, before I dive right in, let's explain who I am. My name is Caleb Broach. I am a marketing consultant and owner whoa, of Club Creative, global marketing consulting firm. Obviously, I have experience working with one of the largest privately held quick service restaurant chains in consumer behavior. And as always, one of my favorite quotes is, the aim of marketing is to know and understand the customer so well that the product or service fits him and sells itself. Now, let's dive right in. Why is data, data analytics crucial for marketing success? Well, let's break down what data-driven marketing actually is. If we're looking at it from a definition standpoint, it's data-driven marketing refers to using customer data and insights to optimize marketing decisions and strategies rather than relying on gut feelings or assumptions. Now, you might ask, why is this important? Well, A, data helps you track what's working and what's not because then it can help you allocate resources more effectively tailor your messaging and improve campaign performance. Now, if we're looking at an example here, instead of guessing which marketing channels are performing best, data analytics shows you exactly which campaigns are driving conversions and ultimately leading success. Now, what is the competitive advantage here? Because a lot of people talk about data-driven marketing, but it's important to understand why are we actually using it and what kind of advantage does this give you? Well, if we're looking at it in today's marketing landscape, Businesses that make data-driven decisions are more likely to outperform competitors by optimizing campaigns in real time and improving ROI. Now, let's dive into uh, the actual side of what types of tools you can actually use for marketers. First, we're going to talk about GA4. Obviously, there's a lot of debate whether GA4 is as good as Universal Analytics. Uh, Google rolled out GA4, I believe, two or three two or so years ago. Um, Universal Analytics was one of the best uh, Google platforms out there for analytics. Obviously, GA4 doesn't seem to have as good of a platform as UA, but we're stuck with GA4. So it's important for us to understand exactly how we can use it and what it's useful for. Best part about this tool for business owners that are a little bit more bootstrapped or maybe don't have as much capital, it's entirely free. GA4 is obviously an essential tool for tracking website performance, user behavior, and conversions. And the key features here are you can actually use it for cross-platform tracking, event-based analytics, and actually AI-powered insights now. They're, they're using Gemini and things like that to make it a better experience. Now, the coolest thing here is A, the cross-platform tracking because you can understand where users are coming from, how long they're staying on the site from different platforms. It obviously provides a, little, a lot of data from um, a marketing perspective of understanding what campaigns are working, what aren't, especially when it comes to conversion tracking. Because if you're running uh, Google ads, Facebook ads, uh, different things like that, we can actually understand from a conversion perspective, how many conversions are coming organically, how many are coming from paid ads, what type of paid ads are working well, things like that, which make a big difference. Now, the use case here that we like we could look at is you could track how users are moving through your website, which pages drive the most conversions, and maybe where people drop off in the funnel the most, or what percentage of people drop off at different points of your funnel, which is obviously a really important data metric for you to understand. Now, secondarily, there's Google Data, data Studio, which again, second tool that's free. Um, it obviously helps you create custom visual reports. It can pull from data from Google Analytics, Google Ads, and other sources. And why this is useful, and we've actually used it for a couple of clients, what it does is you can actually create easy to understand dashboards. You can share this with your team. Clients makes a big difference. And we've learned a tip here. Obviously, it's important to use uh, different dashboards when it comes to Google Data Studio. Um, you can actually use it to create real-time performance dashboards for monitoring your campaigns at a glance, which for performance marketers is a really big thing because you can understand real-time what's working, what's not, what campaigns to turn off, what to turn on. Um, really powerful tool. Now, this is going to be where we get into more paid tools. Um, and obviously, they can be pretty powerful as well. So Right here, Hotjar, um, really powerful platform across kind of user engagement on your website. It goes just a little bit further than GA4 and UA. So what this does is you can actually track all of your user interactions on your website through heat maps, session recordings. And this helps you understand where users click and how they navigate your site. 
Now, the coolest part about Hotjar is there's a lot of different visualization factors here, but what you can actually do is it records every session. So anytime someone jumps on your website, you can actually look at um, where they're going, how long they're staying on certain parts of your page, which is really helpful. And you can essentially watch the user journey from start to finish, which is a huge thing. Now, the other cool part about this is when we talk about heat maps, it actually looks at on your website, on page scroll, how far people make it at certain parts of your website, what percentage of people make it below the fold, things like that. And then the other cool part is this allows you to see what buttons people are clicking, what percentage of people are clicking certain buttons. Obviously, this is a really powerful tool, which is really great. Now, we're going to dive into our second paid tool because obviously outside of Hotjar, we want to look at from an organic perspective or organic SEO, how we can use data analytics from a search engine optimization standpoint to improve organic rankings. This is where if you um, either use SEMrush or AREFs, or if you're trying to make a decision, both tools are really great. Obviously, AREFs has a little bit better of a database from what we found. It's a little bit longer, has a little bit longer of a history, but SEMrush is becoming quite a close competitor from what they're investing in the amount of money that they're pouring into the tool and the research that they're doing and a lot of the add-on features that they're adding. So um, SEMrush and AREFs are pretty close competitively speaking across an organic SEO tool. Now, SEMrush and AREFs, they both provide in-depth SEO data, competitive analysis to help you track keyword rankings, backlink profiles, and search engine performance, which is great. You can see how many backlinks you have, what types of backlinks they are, where they're referring to, the other part about these tools that we don't talk about in this PowerPoint, but um, what you can actually do is you can run audits to understand maybe what 404 pages you have. Maybe you have some um, pages that aren't getting a lot of internal links. So you need to bump that up a little bit. So you can understand where more internal links are pointing, where less internal links are pointing, and then where you may need to make some adjustments. Um, use case here is you can obviously use SEMrush or AREFs to monitor your organic performance. Um, and identify keyword opportunities, which is huge because from what we've seen working with a variety of clients, sometimes the keywords that we think are going to work or have high volume actually don't have high volume. And sometimes the keywords that we don't think would have a high volume actually have high volume. So this makes a really big difference when you can actually do the research and understand what the types of volume that certain keywords are getting. Now, the last thing here, obviously we say MailChimp here, Really, any sort of email marketing platform will do, obviously, but we like to use MailChimp, so we're going to talk about it a little bit. So what MailChimp actually does is it's an email and SMS platform now. Um, they also allow landing pages, postcards, a couple other things. But where MailChimp really excels, it offers detailed email campaign statistics, uh, tracking open rates, click-through rates, and engagement over time, which is really neat because you could start seeing based on send time, based on your audience maybe what percentage of your audience are opening at certain times, how many of your audience members are actually opening your emails, how many of them are clicking in, which can provide some really valuable details. Because if you have a list of 10,000 people, you're only getting a 5% open rate, which would maybe be 500. Um, some people, I forget what number I said here, but you get a certain amount of opens. And then let's say you have a 1% click through rate, but let's say you only have 100 subscribers and you have a 65% open rate or a 70% open rate, and a 25% click-through rate, obviously that audience is a little bit more warm to you. Um, so there's obviously different value props for having a larger audience with less of an open rate and click-through rate versus the other. The other important part here when we talk about MailChimp or email marketing platforms is everyone likes to talk about click-through rate. Everyone likes to talk through open rate, but it's really important to understand what is the premise of your email. If you're sending just an informational email that doesn't have any click-throughs or any buttons or any actions, Obviously, your click through rate is going to be lower versus if you have an email that gets sent out with 15 buttons and three links in addition to that. So obviously, it's really important to understand that sometimes benchmarking averages are really important, but sometimes you have to look at the actual email and see what's at store there. Now that you know what tools to use, we're going to talk about the most important metrics that you should be tracking to make better decisions. The first step here that we're going to look at from a key metric standpoint is website traffic sources. So depending on if you're using ads, if you're just relying on organic, maybe you're doing some organic social, it's important to understand where your traffic is actually coming from. Is it coming from email campaigns? Is it coming from paid ads? Because at the core, knowing which channel drives the most traffic allows you to optimize your marketing budget for the most effective channel. We have a lot of conversations with marketing companies or with other companies that are looking for marketing that they really don't understand where their budget's going and what the most effective platform is. 
they might know that they're spending a certain amount on certain platforms and they might assume that certain platforms are bringing in, but we actually don't, they don't actually know which channel is actually driving the most revenue or the most ROI. So it's really important to understand from a traffic perspective, how many users are actually coming in and what conversions look like from those web traffic sources. Now, the tip here is you can actually go into GA4. There's an acquisition report, which breaks down your traffic by source, which is a really helpful tool here. Now, secondly, we're going to look at conversion rate. Obviously, we're defining conversion rate here is the percentage of web visitors who complete a desired action, such as making a purchase or filling out a form. Where this is important and why it matters is obviously we know that a higher conversion rate indicates that your marketing campaigns and landing pages are effectively driving action. Now, the important piece here to note is sometimes we look at strictly the conversion rate. So we say only 3% of our users are converting. Sometimes we like to blame the ads. Sometimes we like to blame the landing pages. Sometimes we like to blame the offer. Maybe we like to say that none of them are working together. And it's important to use data from this perspective to look at your web traffic sources, to look at Hotjar to see how, how people are interacting on your website and understand what point of your marketing campaign isn't working and where we need to improve um, from a data metric standpoint. Now, the tip here is obviously regularly testing, A-B testing landing pages and ads to can actually improve your conversion rate, which is really important. Now, we've talked about customer acquisition costs several times on this on these videos before, but let's break it down again. So we know that CAC measures how much it costs to acquire a new customer. And why this is important is monitoring your customer acquisition costs, your CAC, helps you ensure that your marketing campaigns are both cost effective and scalable, which is a really important point. Because as we've pointed out previously, sometimes a marketing campaign seems successful, seems like it's going well, um, obviously it seems scalable, but from a cost perspective, if you're spending more to acquire customers than you're making, obviously sometimes you can do this as an established business, but if you're starting out with very little capital, obviously you know that if you're losing money on customers, sometimes it's not scalable and sometimes it's not cost effective. Now, the tip here, like we've talked about before, is you can actually calculate your cost per customer acquisition costs by dividing your total campaign costs by the number of new customers acquired, um, which is really important. Now, the fourth thing that we're going to look at is customer lifetime value. Lifetime value is the total revenue that you expect to earn from a customer over the course of their relationship with your business. And this matters because knowing LTV or customer lifetime value helps you understand how much you can spend on acquiring and retaining customers while staying profitable. Now, the tip here is Focus on improving LTV by improving customer retention and upselling. We've talked a little bit about customer retention on the podcast. We'll talk a little bit more about upselling in the future. Important topics that you can do a little bit more research. Those two are very key when it comes to customer lifetime value. Now, the last thing that we're going to look at here from a data and analytics perspective and key metrics to track is bounce rate. Bounce rate is the percentage of visitors who leave your website after viewing one page. This is a very important statistic that a lot of people overlook because sometimes you might have, let's say, 12,000 people visit your website in a day. The most important metric here is you might have had 12,000 people visit your website, but if you have a um, multi-page experience that someone has to go to to convert, if out of those 12,000 people, 80% bounce, you're looking at 9,600 people that have chosen to get off your website after going through which is a very large chunk. There are averages here. Sometimes you might see a bounce rate of 20 to 30%. You might see 30 to 50%. You might see 50 to 70%. Obviously, it's important to think about from a metrics perspective, what do you want this average to be? And how do you improve your landing page experience and the traffic you're driving to actually fit this percentage that you're looking for? Now, obviously, this matters because we understand from what I talked about that a high bounce rate could actually indicate that your landing page isn't engaging relevant to visitors. But again, to my point, sometimes it's not the landing page. Sometimes it's a traffic that you're driving that might be um, causing a higher bounce rate. Now, the tip here is optimize page load times, improve content relevant, and refine your CTAs to reduce your bounce rate, which is really important. Now that you're tracking the right metrics, let's look at how to turn this data into actual, actual, actual actionable insights, which is a tongue twister. Now, one of the first things that we can do with this data with this, with this data that we can use is we can optimize ad spend. Using data from tools like Google Analytics, Facebook Ads Manager, 
We use this to identify high per performing campaigns, and we can obviously reall reallocate your budget towards them. Now, the tip here is focus your spend on channels with the highest ROI while scaling back on underperforming ones. Now, second, we can actually personalize customer journeys. We're going to use the data to personalize marketing messages based on user behavior, demographics, and preferences. And the tip here is you can actually implement dynamic email content and personalized landing pages to improve email engagement and conversions, which is really important. Now, third, this actually allows for us to improve our content strategy. We can actually analyze what types of content drives the most traffic engagement on your website, blog, or social media. And you can actually use tools like Google Analytics to track page views, time on page, and social shares to see what content resonates most with your audience. Now, fourthly, we can optimize for conversions. You can use the data from the A-B tests that we, we talked about, the heat maps, conversion tracking, and you can use all of these to optimize your landing pages, ad copy, and CTA. Now, the, the tip here, the recommendation is test different elements of your landing pages, headlines, buttons, images, and make data-driven changes to improve conversion rates. Now, the last thing that uh, obviously we can use when we're looking at turning data into actionable marketing strategies is we can predict future trends. This is something that I think a lot of business owners, a lot of marketers forget about, is we can actually use historical data to identify trends and predict future customer behavior, such as seasonal patterns, product demand spikes that are gonna to lead to better data within your business that are gonna to lead to better sales, better cost of goods sold, things like that. Now, you can actually leverage predictive analytics tools in Google Analytics 4, or there's obviously certain CRM systems that can actually help you trans anticipate trends and adjust your marketing strategy accordingly. Now, by using data to inform your marketing strategy, you can continually optimize your efforts and drive better results. So let's wrap up with a quick summary of the key takeaways. So there you have it. To make marketing smarter marketing decisions, start by using tools like Google Analytics, SEMrush, and Hotjar to collect data and track key metrics like traffic sources, conversion rates, and customer acquisition costs. Now, when we look at turning data into action, the key is to use data to continually optimize your campaigns, whether that's reallocating your budget, personalizing your customer journeys, or improving your content strategy. I'm curious, what data analytic tools are you using in your marketing strategy? Let me know in the comments below. And obviously don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and hit the bell for more tips on making data-driven marketing decisions.